Alright, here we go. The best descending you're going to see from Nibali uh, in a long time. This is the Giro 2017. Uh, the Umwell pass. This is basically when Tom de Moulin uh, shat himself and um, had to chase. So L Lando went over the top. He was in the break. Quintana and Nibali stay 16. It is, as you can see on the screen. Quintana uh, went over just ahead of Nibali, but the group was Quintana, Nibali, Pozzo Vivo, and obviously our favourite descender, Zacharin. So Zacharin's about to get passed by Pozzo Vivo very early on. Nibali's on the front and can see. Lander, up to this point, the Italians hadn't won a single stage in this Giro d'Italia, and there was a bit of a national outrage saying what's happened to all of our cyclists. But you can see Zacharin's terrible gaps opening up already. Pots of has got stuck behind him, and he's not happy. Quintana, I think, is a pretty good descender, but Nibali's going full, like, properly. They obviously distanced to Mulan because, well, he had to stop at the side of the road. Um... And do his business and then had to trace back on. I thought it was a bit disrespectful of them going hard. But obviously Kreisweit was up the road. So Kreisweit was in the group behind like Nibali, with um, Mollema and Yates and Pino and some other boys. Um, uh, Young was, I believe, as well. And I think, yeah, the so he to move, demands two minutes back. So he's like furthest on the road for the GC contenders. Um, this is the group I was talking about. Formula, Pino, Young was, Yates, Kreisweit, Mollema. So they're sort of relevant on GC in terms of, oh, sorry, on the stage. Um, the stage was going to be between the the front four riders, but obviously not not um, not uh, Zacharin. Sorry, I forgot his name. Zacharin, the uh, worst center ever. And there's Dumoulin just chasing back on. So there's already big gaps opening up between Nibali and Quintana. And Quintana is a good descender. Like there's no doubt about it. He's not like you know the top 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 top, but he's pretty close. Uh, Pots of has got round Zacharin, and Zacharin is just flying, probably thinking I crashed last year. Don't really want to crash again. Um, so. Obviously, he's probably a bit worried about that. But yeah, here we go. Lander, he's a good descender, I rate. Like, I think he's good, but I think he just doesn't have that urgency of catching someone else. And also, Nibali is just ridiculous. Uh, and he's also, like, properly pressing on, though. I think that's one thing that people that notice. If you watch the acceleration out the corner, it's not. It's properly hard. Like, Lander looks like he's accelerating, but he's not, like, properly attacking it. You'll see, like, on power fires. I, I remember seeing Bernal's power fire from Lombardia in 2018, I think it was. And out the corner, every single time you hit a thousand watts, and that's like properly attacking the descent, or just like getting down. Like obviously you rail the corners, but you're not like, you know, you might sprint up to 600, 800 watts, but not properly. Well, Nibali is like really, you know, he's trying to hurt everyone else because he knows that he's going to have to sprint hard, but everyone else is going to have to sprint even harder because he's taking the corner faster than them. And also, obviously, he wants to win the stage, get the 10 second bonus, and that will also help him out as well. Um, and Chrysler is getting distance, Pino is getting distance as well. This is really like, it's not often that you see a really technical descent. Um, this is into Bormio, so this is the Stelvio, the other side. Um, so they, they climb both sides on this one, to be fair. Um, and then there's climbing in between. It was a hard, it was a hard stage. Um, but yeah, Tom de Moulin is quite far back, to be fair, like a minute and something off, off the pace of the, of the minute GC group. He's like a minute behind that. Um, but yeah, you can see the gaps opening up. It's pretty... Pretty good. Yeah, cool, I'm making a video. Sorry. Um, and, uh, yeah, so, obviously, Zacharin's getting distance here. Um, oh, sorry, Nibali's, Nibali's there attacking, and Zacharin's getting distance um, from behind. Nibali's about to catch up with Mikael Landa. Um, there's the massive Zacharin mm -hmm. fan. Um, who we all we all love to see. Uh, and this descent has so many hairpins. The um, Stelvio is... Uh, yeah, Stelvio, isn't it? Yeah, this is the one. Um, this is like, it's one of the most unbelievable climbs. It's like 20k long or something stupid. Um, it's really, really big. And um, it looks like a super fast flowy descent as well. Obviously, a fair few heavens, but not. Um, but towards the end, it does get a lot more flowy. This is, I think you're about to see, uh, I think it's the next corner or the corner after where you see Nibli doing the bunny hop over the water so he doesn't get his tires wet, which is an absolutely classic point. But there's Quintana. So Quintana's doing right. Pots of Vivo again to descend Zacharin off the, off the thing. And here we go, as I was saying. Lander goes through it, Nibali decides to hop over it so he doesn't get his tyres wet so he can take that corner. Which probably wasn't that important for that corner, but like knowing the other corners, he might be like, if I'm a tyres wet, could could um also could be psychological, he just doesn't really want to have the wet tyres, so then he's got full confidence. Best climber Lander's has got that in the bag, to be honest. He was yeah, I think he would have done super well on GC. I think this could have been his time to really podium on a GC, potentially even win it. Um he was looking super strong in his time trialing that year was was pretty good as well. Obviously, this this Jira had a lot of time trial and kilometers, as we've said before. We get a little zoom back. So he picks the shortest route, hops over it. His back wheel does hit a little bit of water, but not much. But Nibali uses class. There's not many people who do that on a flying descent, probably going like 30, 40k an hour into a hairpin corner. Um, 
the gaps just keep going out. And th this is the why I mean, Lander's not a bad descender because he like keeps up with Nibali. But I guess it's the difference between like following someone else and then you know knowing and having the confidence in yourself um, that. Like, if it's different following someone and having confidence to set the lines on your own and also to be honest he might be you know going through the corner slightly slower um than Nibelin using more power on the exit um and also I guess just following people's lines like Nibelin probably knows his descent better he's from it here to know if he's training around here or not or not the Blander has either but like I assume in what Nibelin's on a lot of Jira, so he must have descended this before so he probably knows it better than some people um and obviously that does help a lot because in those corners, like the really fast corners, obviously a hairpin, everyone knows the speed you can go at because you can see it. But when it's those fast corners, where, like you just don't know how fast it is, how much does it curve around? That's the thing. Uh, Duman's a pretty good descender. He's not making too much progress. Like you can see from the front of the race, he's a little bit getting a little bit closer. But um, Nibali's put a minute twenty, so he's put like a ten second gap into the, the th group three back, and Quintana has put like a decent gap as well. The gaps at the finish line were pretty telling, and the gaps over the top. Between that, you know, the, the front four, Nibali, um, or excluding Lander, like Nibali, lots of you, uh, Zacharin and Quintana were pretty, pretty close. This is the group we keep going on about. Kreisler is really not good at descending now. You thought he was all right, and I think he is now. It must have just been, you know, the stress of the day or something. I don't know, but he's, I mean, obviously he crashed, but he's not that bad. No bunny hop for Mr. Demulan. This was. Prime de Moulin, love the man. Uh, to, to be fair, twenty eighteen, he got two second places as well, which was pretty unbelievable. Um, considering that you know the the Giro, he could have won if Froome hadn't done that ridiculous day, and I guess Yates also blew up as well. So maybe second place was there, but in the tour, he was looking super strong as well. And um, again, sort of unlucky um, to have it. But Nibali almost decks it there. He like leans in. I think his front wheel sort of, or maybe his back wheel, or something skipped out, but it didn't look as good. But Quintana, like to be fair, I think if Quintana was like it's weird that he's got distance because now they're all about the same distance apart. Like, it's not like he keeps on getting dropped behind. Like, I mean, you can't see Zacharin on this, but there he is. You can, you know, he's miles back. So you can tell he's getting worse descending, but maybe Quintana just was a bit tired at the beginning, couldn't follow the accelerations. I don't know, because now he doesn't seem to be losing that much time. And Pots of Evo, I think, was just unlucky. Um, here we go with a bit of a replay to see what happened. Watch Nibali's front wheel sort of checks in, and I think, I don't know, realized he was going a bit too fast. I'm not sure, but it looks really nice this road. This road because it's like obviously unbelievably smooth, but also just most of the corners are banked as well, which is obviously pretty pretty good. It means you can go a little bit faster, and non no off camera corners. And Nibali is absolutely railing. Lando looks very con um, calm behind those, so I think you know he maybe he just didn't know the descent as well. I don't know, but it just seemed odd because he did have a five second gap, and you think you know could have held that down maybe probably longer. Um, Obviously, most people know what's going to happen in the end. I'm not going to spoil it, but it would have been better to go <laughs> solo, solo, I reckon, just because you have a better, higher chance of winning the stage. Um, there's Tom de Moulin again. They keep showing the pink jersey, but he's slightly irrelevant. Like His time gaps aren't changing, really. Um, he's going to keep the, uh, the pink jersey because he had a uh, he had like a very big advantage because obviously there would have been two time trials now. I don't think he'd been dropped in the mountains yet. Um, so, yeah. And then again, another little hairpin. Pedaling around the corners pretty early on, he really like he's yeah he is properly good. He's so good. It's one of those things where you just feel like his descending. I don't think you've ever seen him crash or anything. Like he's just so naturally good on the bike. I guess from Sicily, maybe I think he was near grew up near my Anna, so must have descended that a fair amount. Sicily's not flat, I guess, but um yeah, it's it is. It's a really good skill set to how Lanza and Rouge made some videos about Lombardia, obviously, and his descending techniques, about how he basically dusted off um, Pino. I love the way he's nabbing a gel now. 7k to go. Nibali's one of those people who's properly on it on the food. Like, he doesn't... Like, I, like in Blockhouse as well, the video I made yesterday, he was nabbing food with about 7k to go on the climb. I think he's like... It's always that thing you just got to be topped off for the next day as well. And that's really the GC. Like, this year he came, what, third in Giro and second in Vuelta, which is like mental and like he is one of the best grand tour riders he obviously won all the grand tours 2014 people can you know say what they want about it saying Froom crashed out Constable crashed out but he put everyone else in the absolute bin on that cobbled stage um that was one of the most unbelievable rides um if i can find that i'll definitely do a video i'm a bit of a neebly fanboy i'm a do like him and his old Quintana. netflix documentary on mother star is very good might do a review on it but 10 out of 10 would recommend to watch very interesting the gaps going out you can see to the to the chase group, the third chase group. Here's Zacharin just crying. I mean, what's he doing on the hoods? Like, this is just going to be how you don't descend. I mean, it's just like, 
to be fair, I mean, it's, it's also the gear selection isn't too big a year. I mean, I think, to be fair, like, he does most people off on descents. It's just, like, when you compare him with, like, some of the best descenders in the world, obviously he's not going to look great. But I think confidence is a big thing. Jan Hurts got back in. I didn't think that he was in there. This is the Jira that Jan Hurt um, got the signature for Astana. He was, like, consistently riding the front group. I think he lost loads of time early on, which is why he didn't get top 10 GC. But, like, in terms of climbing-wise, he was easily up there top 10 GC. Um do rate the gold paint job. This is when everyone rode rim brakes, everyone was class. This is probably golden era cycling for me. Did enjoy it a lot. Um, the the races were absolutely mad. Um, especially the like ones which weren't Sky dominated. Like obviously I like Sky, but you know, the, the, the Giro where it's just like, you know, unfortunately for them, Lander and Thomas crashed out. It was just chaos on most stages. Um Breakaways in the Giro are always very exciting when the when the like Pro Conti teams lose that uh, don't get in it and the teams are actually like right get on the front and drill it for like two hundred k to get it back or whatever like those are the good old days um, but the gaps just keep going now the Milan's not even making that much time he's, I guess he's a minute he's staying about the same between him and the chasing group about a minute but Nibali and well it's just Nibali Lana's not even pulling a turn but I guess you know he doesn't he doesn't need to Nibali is a man possessed and you think realistically like. Okay, maybe on the accelerations he can do more work, but you think Lando will be more rested at this point because, like, he's he's just sitting on, I guess, on the descent, maybe. The accelerations, because Nibli is a slightly better descender out of every corner, he's doing more accelerations, more time, I'm not sure, but, you know, you think, realistically, he should should stand a good chance of the stage win. Um, it was quite technical stage finish, we'll go through it, there's sort of like a turn, right-hand turn followed by two consecutive left-hand turns, and you just really got to, like, this is when the director sporty has got to be in your ear and just say like, right, you've got a sprint at 300 meters to make sure you're first through that corner. Because, I mean, the guys, there's no way they can remember a stage finish, especially like, okay, Landon might have been targeting it, but if you just happen to arrive at the front, like, you're not going to remember it. And um, especially after this descent, like, you've got enough stuff. So it, I was wrong, Landon, Landon does do a couple turns on the front. Um, and he, yeah, he won the blue jersey. I think he could have won three stages, to be fair. Yeah, I end up winning, winning the one, but... Um, he he was in a lot of breaks. There was one with TJ Van Garderen when he got mugged off by him, which was a scandalous moment in Landis' career, I reckon. Um, not good. De Moulin, I don't know what's happened to the time gaps because they ballooned out significantly uh, up to three minutes back from Nibali. So I'm not sure I'd trust that. Zacharine, I mean, I don't really know what's going on with the old man. you think that he'd do a Thibaut Pino and just spend the whole off-season just learning how to descend, because gen genuinely he would be a, a complete GC contender. Obviously, he's got third in the world, so he got third in the world this year, to be fair. So the two of the podium were doing pretty well in the Giro, and uh, that's you know generally how it is. But yeah, Lander's pretty solid, but maybe doesn't have the same confidence compared to Nibli. But we're starting to get into Bormio, which is the bottom of the climb, um, bottom of the old Motorolo. Um... I can never remember. No, this is Estelvio, isn't it? I get so confused between the two of them. This is Estelvio. Um, but yeah, so towards the bottom of, of this beautiful climb, the hairpins are starting to come a bit more. This is where you think Nibali is probably on the back. I mean, I guess they can't they can't wait out. Quintana could get back in, but you'd think, you know, Quintana would have to chase for, uh, you know, 10 seconds or 15 seconds to get back on. So you think that could could tire him out. Here's Zacharine doing some questionable hairpin cornering. Um on the hoods, we just don't know why he's doing that. Let's see some controversy. What's going on here? Right, maybe he's got cramp. Not quite sure what that's supposed to mean, but cheers, Jiro, for putting it in. Um, we do love that thing. So here we go. This is the technical finale I was talking about. So it's barrier section. Got a right-hand corner. You think Lander's leaning out. This this should be good because it is very technical. So uh, still downhill. I mean, like, Nibali's obviously laying off, laying off. Um, into the corners trying to save energy because he knows that he can take this corner probably faster than Mika Lando. You can see the, the corner, the the angles they take, the pedals they take. Like, Nibali does have more, is went around that corner faster. But to be fair, Lando's, uh, Lando's keeping the gap. We've now got a helicopter shot. I don't know what's going on, but the the end is very technical. 1.7 kilometers to go. The way further into the barrier section, I don't know why that barrier is from like 1.7k out, but um, Nibali, Nibali is still second wheel. Just chilling out behind old Miguel Lander. And this is where I think Lander should have just sort of stopped pedaling because realistically, like, Quintana, like he wants to put time into Quintana or Nibali. Um, and he probably should have forced him in. Or if he is going to leave from the front, then he definitely should have um, figured out what the finale was. Because you can see, I mean, it's, it's not tight now, but it does start to tighten up. And realistically, there was um, a couple errors that old Miguel Lander is about to do. Um, so around this corner, he takes it. 
first, which I thought was good. We're going to skip over to the fixed view cameras, I reckon, it in about 100 meters. So it's still leading the corner, leading. Good, good, good. Gets around the next corner. Again, you can see pretty technical. So he's, he's starting to sprint, which is fair enough. Yeah. Start to sprint, but then he does the absolute cardinal sin in a minute around this corner. So he knows where he is. He knows where he is. He knows where he is. He's got him on the barriers, and it's like it's all looking good. It's all looking good. And then he has this left hand corner, and then they're about to turn right, I reckon. And this is when we see Nibali go up on the inside, take the corner faster than him, and then Cheerio. So there's the one right hand corner. This is the last one, 450 meters to go. Lander's looking like, why is he not on the right-hand side of the barrier stopping Nibali coming up? And Nibali's still just biding his time, biding his time. I know Lander is just, yeah, I don't really get it, to be honest, because he's got one right-hand corner to go, and again, he just doesn't really close the gate. And then another right-hand corner round here. And then into the finale. Sorry, this is so many corners and Nibali gets money inside and it's a bit like, <clears throat> I guess it's pretty confusing. I mean, I'm not, even myself got, got confused in the finale, but I just think, yeah, Lander didn't, didn't really defend very well. Quintana comes from quite far back, so they had a decent gap on him. But yeah, I mean, the main thing was that not the stage finish. Obviously, Nibali did well dusting off Lander. Zacharine hasn't crashed yet, so well done to the old man. Um, I don't know what's happened to Pots of Evo. Oh, yeah, here's Pots of Evo. Um, but everyone else finished pretty far back. So anyway, cheers watching. Hope you did enjoy this um, sort of clinic on descending from old Vincenzo Nibali. Uh, I don't think we're going to be, we won't be seeing a Jira this year, that's for sure. Might see a Tour, doubtful. Could see a Welter, could happen. Hopefully we'll see a Bucks Hill climb as well, because that's what we, we all know everyone's waiting for that one. So anyway, cheers watching and see you in the next one.